His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, following the success of the kingdom represented by the Khalid bin Hamad Mixed Martial Arts, the KMMA's professional fighter Frankie Edgar, to win the title of the UFC TUF 22 held in Las Vegas. His Majesty the King congratulated Sheikh Khalid on the world title and expressed expressed pride in the tremendous efforts he is exerting in order to bring about regional and international honorable achievements to the kingdom, wishing him further success. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the success of the kingdom represented by the Khalid bin Hamad Mixed Martial Arts, the KHK MMA's professional fighter, Frankie Edgar, to win the title of the UFC TOF 22 held earlier in Las Vegas. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince hailed this achievement which reflects the remarkable efforts exerted by His Highness Sheikh Khalid in the development of youth and sports movement in the kingdom, wishing him further success. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the success of the kingdom represented by the KHK MMA's professional fighters Frankie Edgar to win the title of the UFC TUF 22 hailing Sheikh Khalid's constant support to the team, which resulted in honoring the kingdom in different international championships. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed His Majesty the King's support to the MMA sports in the kingdom and affirmed the support of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports as well as the Bahrain Olympic Committee to the KHK MMA team. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the historic world title where the Kingdom of Bahrain clinched its fourth world title in mixed martial arts, the MMA, after the Khalid bin Hamad MMA, KHK MMA's professional fighter, Frankie Edgar, won the title of the UFC TUF 22. His Highness Sheikh Khalid said that the MMA sport in Bahrain has established itself in the global arena thanks to His Majesty the King's support. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad att attended the final where Edgar representing Bahrain knocked out Chad Mendes just two minutes into the opening round of the Ultimate Fighter Finale's 22 main event held at the Chelsea Hall in the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Sheikh Khalid also extended congratulations to the government led by His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness and is Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier. Sheikh Khalid paid tribute to His Majesty the King's representative for charity work in youth affairs, Supreme Council for Youth and Sport Chairman and the Bahrain Olympic Committee, President Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for his constant support, stressing the strategy put forward by Sheikh Nasser to develop the youth and sports movement in the kingdom has yielded positive results, citing the four MMA titles. He also lauded the outstanding performance of Frankie Edgar and thanked the technical and administrative staff of the KHK MMA team, wishing the team all success. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa deputized His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work in Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, to attend the celebrations of the 44th National Day celebrations and the 16th anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne in This is Bahrain celebration, which was organized yesterday at Bahrain National Stadium by the Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations. 
His Highness Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the participating expatriate communities in the celebrations. This came during His Highness Sheikh Nasser's visit to the celebrations, which included various activities that reflected the community's love and loyalty to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated His Majesty the King on the national occasions and the development of the nation, nation achieved under his rule. His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted the key role played by the expatriate communities living in Bahrain in the development of the country on all aspects. He added that the care received by these communities from the kingdom reflects the country's responsibility and humanitarian stances towards those who live on its soil in coexistence and served it for many years. On her part, Secretary General of Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations, Betsy Matheson, congratulated His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain on the national occasion. She also appreciated His Highness Sheikh Nasser's attendance and positive interaction with the activities of the Federation. Matheson also underscored the democratic and liberated atmosphere expatriate communities enjoy in Bahrain. My only message today is why His Majesty does this uh, for the uh, community and for the foreigners who come to Bahrain. Because the moment they reach to Bahrain, they are truly Bahrainis. They have their full rights and His Majesty is the biggest supporter and the biggest lover to them all. 
representing His Majesty the King, the Foreign Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated along with other world delegates in the International Conference on Policy of Neutrality, International Cooperation for Peace, Security and Development, which is held in Turkmenistan, marking the celebrations of the 20th anniversary of Turkmenistan's neutrality. The Foreign Minister expressed pride in the outstanding friendly relations linking Bahrain and Turkmenistan and the keen desire to further bolster cooperation to build on what has been achieved since the successful visit of Turkmenistan's president's visit to Bahrain in 2011. The minister asserted support of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the neutrality approach adopted by the Republic of Turkmenistan, which has set a model for neutrality over the past two decades. The minister also lauded the contributions of Turkmenistan in activities aimed at preserving sustainable development in the world, as well as enhancing global peace and security. The minister participated along with other leaders in laying flowers at the neutrality monument in Ishqabad, marking the 20th anniversary for Turkmenistan's neutrality. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomes the important positive outcomes of the Syrian opposition factions meeting which was held in Riyadh under the patronage of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. As the Kingdom of Bahrain highly appreciated the great efforts and conducive initiatives made by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with a strong will and sincere determination to strengthen security and stability of the region and the world, it also expresses its confidence that the achievement made in the Riyadh conference is a strategic move in order to reach a political solution that meets the hopes and aspirations of the broadly Syrian people. The Chief Executive of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dayna, today met with Mr. Ban Ki Moon, with Secretary, the Secretary General of the, of the United Nations, on the sidelines of the COP21 Climate Change Conference in Paris. During the meeting, Mr. Ban Ki Moon welcomed Bahrain's commitment and support to the United Nations initiatives and efforts and extended his appreciation and gratitude to Bahrain's leadership in this regard. Mr. Ban Ki Moon recalled the constant and constructive dialogue he has held with the government during his visits to the kingdom. The Secretary General said that he looks forward to visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain before the end of his tenure and reiterated that international collaboration is imperative in efforts to tackle climate change issues. During the meeting, Mr. Bin Dayna, Dr. Bin Dayna affirmed Bahrain's commitment to working with the United Nations on all fronts. He emphasized the importance of addressing global warming and the importance of maintaining a safe and sustainable environment locally, regionally and internationally. In this regard, Dr. Bindana highlighted Bahrain's and its JCC partners continued collaboration with international organizations to overcome and address the challenges of climate change, particularly in relation to economic diversification efforts. Dr. Bindana went on to reaffirm Bahrain's offer to host a regional center for the Green Climate Change Fund to serve West Asia, as outlined by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince during the opening of the conference. Dr. Bindana also welcomed the important role played by the UN in facilitating funding and support for climate change initiatives. Dr. Bindana stressed that the conference provided a unique opportunity for world leaders to address the challenges of climate change and that the Kingdom firmly supports efforts to keep global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. As 2015 draws to a close, Bahrain Television will be reviewing the performance of various sectors throughout the year. We begin with a report on the energy sector brought to us by Danielle DePorto. Bahrain's energy sector, comprising oil and gas and electricity and water, is a pillar of the kingdom's economy, contributing more than a fifth of GDP. The economy as a whole has been hit by a global decline in oil prices. December 2015 saw Brent crude prices hit seven-year lows, below $38 per barrel. In an effort to reduce the heavy burden of subsidies on state finances, diesel fuel prices rose at the start of the year, and another multi-phased readjustment program was launched to raise the price of gas sold to industrial plants. Fortunately, longer-term fundamentals for the energy sector look promising. All our major energy projects are on track. The government of Bahrain lent uh, through these cycles of ups and downs in the oil prices that we shouldn't uh, stop investment in projects that really will in the long term bring more uh, reward and return for Bahrain. 
In this uh, sector, for example, in the oil and gas sector and the energy sector, electricity and water, it is important to spend the money to reap the benefit of that investment. And it's a long-term investment. Oil and gas sector projects currently underway include the new 115-kilometer Babco Aramco Bahrain Saudi oil pipeline project, set to increase capacity to 350,000 barrels per day by 2018 at a cost of around $300 million. Babco modernization project, set to increase production at the GCC's first refinery whilst enhancing profitability and reducing environmental impact at a cost of around $5 billion. The Banna Gas expansion project, building of an LPG plant to convert associated gases at a cost of around $600 million and a joint venture with Q8, costing around $1.5 billion to convert naphtha gases into aromatics products. Meanwhile, on the electricity and water side, a new power station is under development at Al Dour at a cost of approximately $1.5 billion, and a new 400 kV network is being constructed using $750 million in funds from the GCC. The Gulf Electric power grid already connects the six countries of the GCC, reducing rates of blackouts, and the next step is to establish a Gulf Energy Exchange common market. There are also plans to connect the GCC's water supply and coordinate desalination. 2015 has also seen commitment to sustainability and renewable energy initiatives. Per capita energy consumption in Bahrain is amongst the highest in the world, with growth outpacing projections. The Kingdom's energy efficiency strategy targets a 20% reduction in electricity consumption by 2030. In power generation, there are uh, gas turbines today with up to 70% efficiency against uh, the gas turbines that may be uh, is used in some of the facilities now that has only 20 or 25% efficiency. So imagine the drive, uh, the energy saving that we can achieve. Uh, in air conditioning is the same, in lighting is the same. We must encourage our citizens, the people that live in Bahrain, to go for a sustainable type of material and energy, the same way that the industry is doing in order to uh, maximize the utilization of the very limited natural gas that we have in Kingdom of Bahrain. Around 65% of electricity consumption goes on air conditioning, with a further 15-17% to 17 on lighting. EWA's new energy efficient lighting program, requiring energy efficient bulbs throughout the country, aims to bring that down to 10%. Various pilot programs in solar and wind electricity generation across the southern governorate are set for expansion with connection to the high voltage distribution network. Under Bahrain's Energy Minister, Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, the National Oil and Gas Authority and the Electricity and Water Authority have benefited from the exchange of technologies and expertise at a plethora of exhibitions and conferences hosted by the Kingdom, including, but not limited to, the Third Gulf Energy Conference, Third Middle East Process Engineering Conference, MEPEC, and Third Arab Forum for Nuclear Energy. Additionally, the Minister represented Bahrain's interests at overseas events, such as the OPEC International Seminar, Roundtable Forum of Asian Energy Ministers, and Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. All efforts have been geared towards enhancing the efficiency, effectiveness and sustainability of Bahrain's oil and gas and electricity and water industries, as energy is the sector upon which all public and private development builds. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. Very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain Television. The Kingdom's tourism sector will get a boost by the launch of Sam Han Holding Company's Gravity Project, which will be officially opened on December 16th. It will feature the tallest glass indoor skydiving tunnel in the world at 12 metres, where the wind speed reaches up to 290 kilometres an hour. Gravity's Director General Mitchell Lawson expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa for supporting the national project, implemented by the CEO of Samhan Holding Company, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The indoor skydiving centre is equipped with advanced safety technology and is suitable for all age groups from age 4 upwards, attracting both amateur and experienced flyers.
Good evening and welcome to the Sports News on Bahrain TV. Baharak fell two goals in front of Manama in the Bahrain National Stadium in the seventh round of the first division football. Manama scored the first goal by the by Mahmoud Abdurrahman in the 31st minute. The second was scored by Ali Habib in the 74th minute. So Manama got their first three points in the league while Baharak stopped at 10 points. East Rafah got back to their winning ways after beating Psetin five goals to one. East Rafah goals came through Abdullah Yusuf twice and a goal each for Faisal Bidahoum and Abdullah Janahi and Sami Al Husseini. Psetin only goal came through Hisham Mansour. With the win, East Rafah lifts his point to 11 points, while Psetin stay with 13 points. <laughs> 